Let's talk about Revelation. We've been studying and learning about prophecy and uh, eschatology. That simply means things to come. We've learned about differing viewpoints on the book of Revelation, about the millennial reign, about the return of Christ, and We've learned about the number 666. We've learned about the number 7. We've learned a lot of things. And today I want to talk to you about the importance of metaphors and similes uh, in the book of Revelation. And you understand the difference between a metaphor and a simile. A metaphor would be, he is a rock. That's a metaphor. That person's not actually a rock, simply saying that they're strong. A simile uses the word either like or as, and a simile would be he is like a rock, okay? So there are metaphors and similes in the book of Revelation because it uses figurative and symbolic language often. Now, let me just say this so that you'll understand that the Bible must always be taken in what we would call a literal or normal sense. And, and, and by literal, let me describe what I mean. From the context and from common sense and from a normal reading, you'll understand what is poetry and what is not. You'll understand what is metaphor and what is not. It's important to note that metaphors and similes, uh, even though they are metaphor, they can prove something that is absolutely true. And let me give you an example. Uh, Jesus said that he is the bread of life. Jesus said that he is the door. Now, do we take that literally, that Jesus is a loaf of bread? No, that's a metaphor. Now, even though it's a metaphor, is it teaching something that is absolutely true? Absolutely it is. It is teaching that Jesus is the sustenance of, for our spiritual lives, that we cannot live spiritually apart from him. That's a that's a, a non-negotiable truth from the word of God, that apart from Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. Uh, do we believe that Jesus is actually a door made of wood and has a doorknob and hinges when he says, I am the door? No. Uh, so that is a metaphor. However, it is an absolute truth that is being taught that Jesus is the only way to the Heavenly Father, the only way to salvation. Okay, so you see how that works? So metaphor and simile and symbolic language, uh, you'll know from a normal reading when it is symbolic, but always look for the absolute truth that is conveyed through that metaphor or simile. So uh, scripture is inspired by God and should always be taken seriously. And so that's what we're trying to show you. But there are similes and metaphors that you need to understand how to read these things in the book of, uh, of Revelation. Let me give you some examples from the book of Revelation. The beast in the book of Revelation. Do we actually believe that, um, that the Antichrist the beast, that that's going to be like some big hairy monster, some beastly bear. No, uh, but that describes, uh, the beast describes evil. And so it is a metaphor, but it is an absolute truth that it is conveying. Um, it describes antichrist governments and false religions, etc. In the book of Revelation, it describes locusts, that's what they're called, coming up from the earth to torture men. And it describes them, and I don't remember every way that it described them, but it said that they had teeth like a lion, hair like women, faces like a man. They had breastplates and they had stings in their tail. Well, let's take that um, for most likely what that is. That is a first century way to describe something that they didn't know what it was. It is likely this was describing some kind of modern day military equipment, maybe a tank, maybe a, an Apache helicopter, maybe an airplane that drops bombs, something of that nature, perhaps, is what that is describing. So how would you describe that if you lived in 95 AD and 
you'd never even heard of an airplane or a gun or even gunpowder for that matter. Well, you would use metaphoric language and symbolic language, but once again, it conveys a truth uh, that, that God is bringing judgment against evil, okay? And that's the truth that it conveys. So there are many others, but be careful not to spiritualize and take away the true meaning of the text. Um, Revelation chapter 1 um, gives us a great example of a simile that is found in the book of Revelation. I'm going to kind of break it down a little bit for you so that you'll learn how to read the book of Revelation more effectively. Let me read this to you. Revelation 1, 12 to 16. Here's what it says. Then I turned, this is John the Apostle talking, then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man. Remember, the Son of Man uh, was an Old Testament way of describing the Messiah. And so he's saying that he turned and he saw the Messiah. Who is the Messiah? It's Jesus Christ. So he said he was clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. Now here's where the, the simile and everything comes in. The hairs of his head were white like white wool like snow. So he's like wool and like snow. It was very white. His eyes were like a flame of fire. Um, his feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. And from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun shining in full strength. And there's so many similes and metaphors in this. Um, does Jesus literally have a literal sword when he opens his mouth that comes out? I'm talking about the word of God. The power of it is more powerful than a sword, okay? And he does use it to judge, but he also uses it to speak into existence, to speak creation and so forth, and to speak in our life. The word of God that's a that's a, a simile or a metaphor uh, about uh, the, about the word of God that he has a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. Um, once again, this simile, his face was like the sun shining in full strength. Now, let's just kind of take the hair part for for an example. Jesus does not have wool for hair, and his feet are not made of bronze, and he is not actually carrying a sword in his mouth. These figures of speech have a meaning that is very important. So don't miss the meaning of the metaphor or the simile. The sword coming from his mouth represents truth, judgment, and the word of God. So this sword coming from the mouth of Jesus, it is that Jesus is a righteous judge, that he will speak judgment on evil and false religion and the devil, and evil governments, and those that have rejected Christ. So it is judgment. It is truth. You cannot get around the truth. You cannot live without truth. And Jesus speaks the truth. He is the truth. And of course, it is the word of God. His eyes being like a flame represent his omniscience and his ability to judge righteously. So his eyes being like flames means that he sees clearly. Um, that before him we cannot hide. His eyes are like a flame of fire. You cannot hide from him. When you stand before God, you're not going to be able to hide your relationship or lack thereof from God, from Jesus. You just won't be able to do it. He knows. He knows everything you've done. He knows how you've lived. He knows your life. Now, thank God for his grace and through justification, his righteousness has been given to us. And when God looks at us as believers, he sees the blood of Jesus and our forgiveness. When he looks at a non-believer, you know what he sees? He sees the fact that they're not covered by the blood. He sees their works. So he's not going to judge Christians um, by their works. In other words, they were working. They thought they were good enough to go to heaven. That's not how he judges believers because they have been saved. 
but non-believers he'll see as a righteous judge. He'll see their works. And you know what the Bible says about our works? That it all falls short. That we break every command, even if we don't even know that we do. Um, And so we fall short of the glory of God. And that's what he sees. He has the eyes to see righteously. And he has the eyes that are righteous in judgment. So let's talk about his hair. There are a few things we can learn about this. The white represents his purity and holiness. He is without sin. He is perfect. He is the definition of righteousness. He is the standard of all good. Um, There's a connection to this, to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 says, and this is Daniel writing, he says, as I looked, thrones were placed and the ancient of days took his seat. That's talking about Jesus, the ancient of days. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool, and his throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. Once again, um, metaphors and similes. The white of his hair represents his purity and his holiness. So there's some clear connections to Revelation chapter 1 that connects us to several things. And once again, this is the truth that is being conveyed. So don't miss, don't try to spiritualize everything and miss the truth that is being taught when you're reading the Bible. Uh, Here's some things that are clear from Revelation 1. He is the king of kings on a forever throne. He is the king of kings on a forever throne. He is going to rule and reign forever. Um, He is the covenant-keeping God. He never breaks his promises. He is the ancient of days. He is Yahweh, the the covenant-keeping God. The same in Daniel as in the book of Revelation. And so this is talking about Jesus and that he is God. Uh, He is pure, holy, and righteous, and he is a righteous and just judge. One day, Jesus will judge in righteousness. And it, his grace will cover those that have put their faith in him. But his true righteousness will be poured out. His true judgment will be poured out on those that have rejected Christ. And so very important that he is pure, holy, and righteous. He is the son of God. In Daniel, he was the son of man, the ancient of days, uh, and the Messiah. Okay. And in uh, Revelation, uh, he is that as well. And that he is one with God. That's the final thing that we learn, the final truth. So what do we learn about how to read the book of Revelation? Well, there are always meanings to symbols and metaphors and similes. So always understand that. Don't try to overly spiritualize it. Don't try to overly make it an allegory as if, Uh, It doesn't have a literal, real meaning. The Word of God does. And make sure that you understand that the symbols in the Bible point to something profound. And in this case, they point to Jesus. So I hope this helps you read the book of Revelation better and to understand it more. Until next time, I love you, and I hope to see you this Sunday in church. God bless.